Hello class, this is the last in the series on the weak verb and today we're going to look at the pay yud vav verbs. There are going to be two parts to this video. First of all, we're going to work just with the chalkboard and then we're going to switch over to the um, table that I'll actually be handing each of you and we'll go take a quick look at it to see examples of some of the things I've spoken about and just to get an idea, a decent overview of what this particular weak verb looks like. Um, we're going to look, I've experimented with different ways of doing this and I'll try and get some class feedback later on. So the pay yud or pay vav verb and basically what that means, uh, as you probably already know, we look at the letters pa'al, pay ein lamed for the verb and we're talking about this one here, this first root letter here, which is going to be, uh, if I just, I could mark it alternatively, first, second and third roots. But this one here, this pay, is either going to be a yud or a vav, and that's the verb verb class that we're actually going to be dealing with. First thing I need to mention about this is that uh, the reason for the name yud vav is because there are two separate groups that have been mashed into one. There is the classical, or should I say, primitive um, pay yud in which we have verbs such as yatav and alternatively we also have the more common type of verb which is called peyud and representative of that would be something like yalad now these both look the same in this particular uh, as I put them here in the Carl third masculine singular but we'll see that there are some uh, major differences, if you like, in the way in which they conjugate. What you really do need to know is that this form, the primitive peyud, this one is relatively rare, and this is one of the few verbs in which we're actually going to see it. You need to turn to the relevant sections in the course book to find out uh, which verbs there are, but they are relatively rare. So most of the time you see a verb which has a peyud, it's going to be of this class here in which um, you'll see in a minute, uh, though we call it pay yud, it's perhaps more accurately is described as a pay, va, pay vav. The reason is uh, occurs or is reflected in the declension, or sorry, the conjugation of these verbs. And there is kind of like a basic understanding, basic rule, that when we're dealing with this type, the primitive type, um, I'll just call it type B for the time being. When we're dealing with this type, whenever we add anything to the front of it, like when we go to the imperfect, for example, then this yud, that yud, if you like, of the root is going to remain. So the imperfect third masculine singular is going to look something like this, um, yitav, and the obviously the second masculine singular would be titav, uh, Titvi, uh, Nitav, and so on and so forth. So, what we're seeing, what's important to note, is that this yud of the root, even though it may lose a vowel, partially lose a vowel, or change its vowel, it is basically um, apparent throughout all conjugations. And that's the rarer of the two cases. Contrasting that is this type A, I'm going to call it for the sake of argument whereby there are we see a number of changes that happen once we begin to put um, any kind of um, any prefix it's any prefix let's do it like that any prefix in front of it we begin to see a number of changes and the two major changes we're going to see the first occurs in the cal imperfect if we change the verb um, look for an imperfect one, something like yashav, which is also in that class. Yashav, like this. Once we add um, one of the prefixes to it for the imperfect, um, let's just for, say for another yud, for instance, then the result is going to be something like this, yashav. Yeshev, like this. 
And in this particular case, what has happened is that the two yuds come together, and that's the yud of the third masculine singular imperfect. They come together and they create this form here with the long e. And so the only real sign that you have of the root yud is, if you like, a, a dot or the extended, the longer vowel sound right here. So that's what the imperfect looks like. So you have teshev, yeshev, neshev, and so on and so forth. And we need to compare that with the form we've just seen with, when you, with the primitive uh, pe yud in which we are left with uh, something more similar to um, yetav, yitav, sorry, like this. So what we're both basically seeing here is that with the primitive pe yud, the yud remains, but with the uh, pe vav, essentially, that's what it is we're looking at, this type B, we have that yud, if you like, um, is only reflected in the uh, extended uh, or the lengthened vowel underneath. So that's um, the first of the big changes you really need to, we really need to uh, keep in mind. The second of them you like, and this is with um, the other binyanim, is uh, quite similar. If I go back to, if we go back to this original root of yalad, and we take the, the word yalad right here, if we are going to add, if we want to add, uh, let's just say the nun of the nif'al onto this, then what happens is that this yud here will transform into its true colors, which is really a vav. And the form we will be left with, things, it will become a form more similar to no lad like this no lad no lad now what's going on here is basically that uh the what it looks like a yud here in this case is in reality a vav and whenever we have these um prefixes of the binyan uh, particularly added onto the root letter then that yud will become a vav just like this and it'll be the first root letter if you like of the um uh, of the word itself of that particular verb so that's really what we need to look out for those are the basic principles what we're looking at and now we are going to turn to uh, the verb table itself to see some of the changes the variations and some of the characteristics of this particular weak verb set okay this is a look at the whole table if you like the entire uh, weak verb table of the pe yud vav. We can just see it, just move that over here. What we're looking at here, the pe yud vav. This is what everything looks like. And the first thing I need to tell you, or you need to see, or you'll notice immediately, is that not all of the binyanim are represented here, and that the strong, uh, the doubled verbs, the pl, the pu'al, and the hit pa'el are not represented. And this is simply because there is no change in the morphology of those verbs when we are looking at the pe yud vav uh, group. So the only ones we need to worry about are the kal nif al, hif il, and hof al. As I mentioned before, there are two types. We've got the A type. I'd call this type the A type and this type the B type. This was the type that maintained, take a closer look at it, at the, um, the imperfect, if you like, um, the perfect, um, I'm skipping past that simply because the perfect of these forms is exactly the same as the strong verb. So we don't have to worry about that. Yashava, yeshavta, yeshavti, yeshavti, and so on. It's exactly the same as the, <clears throat> as the strong verb. The changes really begin with the imperfect. And the imperfect of the type B with the native, if you like, primitive pe yud, we see, just as I'd shown you before, the yud remains in every case, so you can see three root letters, yud, tet, bet. Every case, yud, tet, bet, we see those root letters. That means it's a primitive pe yud and the uh, root letter remains. Now, contrasting this is the other kal, this is the type A I mentioned, in which the yud of the root, if you like, is uh, assimilated, absorbed, and it becomes just a long E sound. And so we have this consistent E 
sound underneath all of the prefixes of the imperfect. So we have Yeshev, Teshev, Teshev, Teshvi, Eshev, Yeshvu, and so on. Note the A vowel right here, Teshavna, Teshavna. But once again, the Yud is captured within the long E sound down below. If we stay with the Kal, and bring this in a bit, we look at uh, some of the non-finite forms. We've got the imperative comes in Shev. And right here, you'd have Shev, Shvi, Shvu, Shevna. Right here, you don't have the Yud, and that uh, acquiesces, it disappears altogether. And you're only left with the last two root letters. So that is something we have to be very careful of. We um, we've seen a couple of these and we will meet a few more in the readings which are to come in the, in the weeks to come. The infinitive construct form comes in uh, Shevet. Again, the Yud is lost effectively. And under normal circumstances, there would be a, a, a addition, a prefix of some sort. It might be something like La Shevet uh, added to the beginning, a lamid to create la shevet at the beginning, but it's effectively the only two letters of the root that we see with the infinitive construct are the shin and the bet. The infinitive absolute is pretty much the same as the strong verb in yashov, uh, just as easily we could have written katov, it would be exactly the same, as is the participle uh, yoshev, yoshevet, uh, Yoshevim Yoshevot. So there's no real big changes uh, with those forms there. Regarding the uh, primitive Peyud, we don't have attested forms for most of these. The only one we have is for Yotev, so only that's been added. Now I'd mentioned that before, but I do want to mention it just again. Uh, keep in mind that the this type uh, B form is relatively rare and the roots that you're most likely to see in it is this one here. But again, turn to the vocabulary, vocabulary list in the uh, course textbook in the reading and you'll see a list of other uh, uh, examples, but it is quite short. If we turn now to the nif'al by itself, look at the nif'al, perfect, I mentioned before, once we add the prefix the bin, of the binyan, then we instantly see the yud becomes what it really is, uh, a vav. And so we have a nolad, nolda, noladata, noladat, noladati, noldu, noladatem, noladatem, noladnu, so forth. And this is the case, it's quite easy to spot. The, this vav here is in fact the yud, if you like, of the root. And that's basically what happens to it when we add that, that prefix to it. With the imperfect, we see something which is uh, perhaps a little strange. But with the imperfects of the nif'al, then we basically get the nun, if you like, assimilating and becoming a dagesh. And the effect is that the first root letter is hardened. It is still a vav, but it becomes a consonantal vav and not a, a vowel, a vocalic vav. And so we read this as a consonant and we read yi va led, ti va led, ti va led, ti valdi, and so on and so forth. So the big point is that the uh, assimilation of the nun into this, this is a strong degesh effectively, hardens the vav and that vav very much becomes a, um, a consonant as opposed to a vowel. Looking at the uh, modal forms, modal and um, non-finite forms, we've got the imperative in hivashev. This form, we are going to experience a degree of morphological neutralization. And hivashev will cover us for the imperative, infinitive construct, as well as the infinitive absolute. So it's one form, and context is really going to um, tell you which form you're looking at and how you're actually going to interpret it. But that's something we have to pick up with time. The participle, no shav, again, the vav, you turns to a vav. Noshav. Note also the long uh, A sound of the participle. We saw that with the regular PL as well. If I just jump quickly up to the third masculine singular, we've got the short A vowel. Uh, noun type forms generally prefer 
to have that longer A vowel, and that's what we see in the participle, noshav, noshevet, noshavot. Moving to the hif'il, and here again we have to return uh, once again to the type A and type B, because the type B does uh, show up quite often in the, in the hif'il. And here we've got uh, it's a nice comparison. We see the yud of the root right there, and it remains throughout all of these um, conjugations, whereas the yud of the type A, and they've called this type, um, if you one, if you like, the vav type right here, this um, yud turns to the vav, reverts to the vav, which is probably what it really was originally. So you've got the holid, holida, holadata, holadat, holadati, and so forth. So you've got a nice comparison between the two. Most of the time, I repeat again, the, the forms you will see will be of this type, with the yud really um, running about disguised as a vav, if you like. With the imperfect forms, We see the yud consistently throughout all conjugations of the type b, and again we see the vav consistently in the type a. Note as well that uh, similar to the regular hif'il, we've got this um, e and the long the infix of the long e inserted between the second and third root letters of the hif'il. That that is um, throughout. Looking at the last few forms, again, we don't have to worry too much uh, about the type B because not many of the forms are attested. We do have a participle in metiv, but again, the yud is uh, apparent and it does give us a great clue to what we're looking at. And regarding the um, hif'il, these are our forms of Hoshev, which is the imperative, which is a shortened form. Hoshev, the infinitive construct. The Hoshev, again, just like the imperative third masculine singular, there's a, you'd have to wait um, until you have a better context to determine which is which. You've got Moshev, Moshevet, Moshevot, similar to the other forms. Once we've got that prefix of the Binyan, then the Yud refers to being a Vav. And the last thing we're going to look at is just the uh, Hof al form. This is really quite rare, but we still have to uh, give it some time. And with the Hof al, what we're looking at right here is you've got the addition of the uh, Binyan, the stem marker, the He. And in this case, we've got the O sound of the Hof al combining together with the Vav, and you get this U sound, Hu Val, Hu Val. If you see something like this, then you know the hey is going to be the prefix of the binyan, and the vav effectively you need to read as the root. So you've got huval, huvla, huvalta, and uh, so on and so forth. So it's that u sound, tuval, tuvli. Here we go with the, with the imperfect as well. Similar thing occurs. Uh, it looks very similar to the perfect, where you've just got the prefix, uh, in this case, prefix of the um, imperfect and then you've got the vav because it's a type A effectively and the yud turns to a vav and that's what we see all the way down these forms again they're giving you these last three participle forms the others aren't attested but they're giving you these forms to see what it looks tell you what it looks like but be aware we're not it's unlikely we're going to come across many of these forms in our reading um, it's, it's certainly the active stems with regards to this. It's certainly the active stems, the kal, uh, two kal forms, the nif'al, the hif'il, uh, either one that we need to pay more attention to. So with that, I'll be handing out this sheet uh, to you later on in the week. And this is the last of the weak verb forms. And what you really need to do now is uh, begin using all of them, all of these uh, sheets. Uh, so when you are parsing, you look at your individual uh, 
look at your route, try to establish what the route is. And if you see that the route is, let's just say, for example, it looks like it's a pay yud or pay vav, then you need to turn to this sheet to try and um, gain the remainder of the parsing information. So with that, um, we'll close out this video session and we will resume back in class.